perhaps the most unappreciated R&B and soul pioneers of all time. This man was a phenomenal performer and a major figure in music history. At just the age of 18, he would score his first mega hit with his versatile and emotionally expressive voice. Due to his height and age, he was given the nickname Little, standing at just five feet tall. The centerpiece of today's story is Little Willie John. Before we get started in today's video, let's be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to stay up to date. Now without further ado, let's cue that intro. William Edward John was born on November 15, 1937 in Collinsdale, Arkansas. He is one of Lily and Maris John's 10 children. His family would relocate to Detroit when he was just four years old, where he was raised in a religious home. Like many singers, John, he began his singing career in the choir of his family's church. His family would form a gospel quartet named the United Four to surround the children. He would shortly leave the group at the age of 14 to go solo. John, he would participate in a talent show that was sponsored by Johnny Otis. But before Otis could even speak to John, King Records executive said Nathan, who was in the crowd at the time, had really took a liking to John's voice. Nathan, he was very pleased by John, but he would opt to sign another competitor named Hank Bollard. John, who was only a teenager at the time, performed with many legends such as Count Basie and Duke Ellington. During this time period, he would also record a few small singles for Savory Records. Now at the age of 16, he would record a Christmas record that went nowhere. Mabel John, Willie's sister, was a member of Ray Charles to Ray Letts, but her career is pale if you compare her career to her brothers. The next year, John, he would meet Paul Hucklebug Williams, who would then take him on tour with his orchestra for a year. While on tour in 1955, John, he would meet musician and producer Henry Glover, who would sign him to a deal with King Records. Due to his small structure, he was given the moniker Lil Willie upon signing with King. That same year, John, he got right to work releasing a song that would reach the top of the R&B charts with all around the world. Well, if I don't love you, baby. He would then follow up by releasing a string of hits that next year with Need Your Love So Bad. I need someone's hand to lead me through the night. Home at last. My little girl is a country girl. Letter from my darling. Tis letter that I Do something for me. No greater need. And fever. You never know how much I love you. Never know how much I care. The single Fever has sold over 1 million copies and was awarded a gold disc. In 1958, He'll release three more singles with Talk To Me, Talk To Me. Talk to me. Mm, you're a sweetheart. You're, you're a sweetheart. And tell it like it is. I love you, darling. In 1959, he will release two more singles with Let Them Talk. Let them talk if they want to. And leave my kitten alone. You better leave my kitten alone. To promote his debut album, John he would perform as the opening act to James Brown and the Famous Flames while on tour. On May 25th, 1957, John he would marry Darlin Boner and the couple, they would have two boys. Now, unlike many black artists at the time, John, he had no issue crossing over to a white audience on a regular basis. During the early 60s, John, he had nine charting singles with 
a cottage for sale. Our little dream castle with every dream gone. Heartbreak is hurting me. Sleep. Walk slow. Walk slow. Don't run. The very thought of you. Thought of you. And I Flamingo. Like a flame in the sky. Flying over the island. I've got spring fever. Every year when spring rolls around, my lonely heart falls to Take my love. Take my love. I wanna give it all to you. And now you know. You never knew how it would feel. On August 3rd, 1958, John, he was part of the historic cavalcade of jazz performance that was organized by, by Leon Heffin Sr. in Los Angeles. Now, during these difficult times for black people, it was very typical for our famous figures to advocate for our rights. And John, he was a civil rights activist who worked to end segregation. In 1964, the NAACP would host a show that John performed at. By the mid-60s, John's music had stopped charting and the loss of attention had a severe impact on him, causing his conduct to deteriorate. As like other individuals, John, he struggled with his demons and addictions as he battled with alcohol. It was said that anytime he was under the influence of alcohol, he would get violent. It was also said that carrying a knife was not unusual for him. John, he was notorious for his quick temper, which led to a record of arrests for drugs, swindling, and grand theft. He was dropped from King Records in 1963, and John, he most likely thought that he lost everything, and he was a walking, ticking time bomb at this point. It was also alleged that he carried a pistol with him during a performance at the Apollo Theater. At the pinnacle of his career, his life would forever be altered by a single decision. In 1964, John, he would get into a confrontation with a man named Kevin Roundtree at an after-show party in a private residence in Seattle, Washington. The brawl would be over a chair that Roundtree had taken from a woman who was with John. When John approached Roundtree, he would strike him. That was a result into John stabbing him. Now he was convicted of manslaughter two years later in May of 1966, and he was sentenced to eight to 20 years in a Washington state prison. John, he would pass abruptly two years into his sentence on May 26, 1968 at the age of 30. The reason of John's death was unknown. The press was told it was pneumonia, but his death certificate stated that it was a heart attack. Now, I'm not sure if any of those are true, but it's reasonable to assume that he died under mysterious circumstances. He was inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1996, the Rhythm and Blues Music Hall of Fame in 2014, the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2016, and the Michigan Rock and Roll Legends Hall of Fame of June of that year. He was also inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame in 2022. Little Willie John was a well-dressed and energetic showman. John, he would rise to fame at a very early age. Some achieved success at an early age, but only with the assistance of a group. It's incredible that John had a top charting hit at the age of 18 on his own. John was pretty meaningful in the music industry as a late great James Brown had dedicated a whole album to him. Although John is still largely absurd to the general listeners, the music industry has recognized him as a major impact on soul music.